Hey guys, welcome back to the Tukes and Tires YouTube channel. As always, I'm Zach, and this week we're accompanied by my good buddy Jordan. We do a whole bunch of cool things on the C1 Chevelle today, like figuring out the inside and outside door handle. That's pretty wicked. We do a whole bunch of little sheet metal work, and we get some new tires for it. So let's get after it. Hey, is that Timmy's? Yeah, because we're in Canada. All right guys, so you already know what's going on in this video better than I do, uh, but we have a whole bunch of things we need to actually kind of, you know, small things that need to be done. Uh, this is, I think, the first video since we've been back since Motorama. I took like, I think like a week and a half off of filming. Uh, just, you know, puttered around here slowly. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you probably would have seen all the things I was up to until this point. Uh, but uh, I do have a buddy that's gonna be coming over and helping me hopefully later in this video and hopefully We're gonna actually get my DOT tires that we're gonna be throwing on the car So you guys will get to see that so hopefully it's gonna look super cool on those uh, But I think the first thing that we need to figure out is door handles uh, So the last door video you guys probably been really confused on like hey How are you gonna actually open those doors from the inside and the outside? Uh, so we're gonna figure that one out uh, I do have some stuff on the table back here, so we'll show you that. Uh, I've actually already done the driver side, which is actually super weird because usually I do it first with you guys and then try to figure out the other side myself. Uh, so we're trying just something a little different in today's video. Uh, so I got a whole bunch of stuff I've already made up here to hopefully make this go pretty smoothly. Uh, so basically for the outside one, uh, what we're going to be doing is hiding it actually in the rear uh, wheel well. Uh, so this is the handle I got. I actually had to modify it to actually make it lock. Uh, the other one on the other side, if I can find a picture of it, uh, was discontinued. You couldn't get it anymore. So actually, I just had to make it from what I could buy at my supplier. And it pretty well worked out the exact same way as the other one. For the inside stuff, this is what we got going on here. Uh, this is an original Chevelle handle. Let you see what's going on. Uh, so we're gonna make that work. The actual little piece here that's gonna like that attaches it is for a Tri Five Chevy. Uh, it's just nice because it has like this little spot that we can hook onto, and it's spring loaded, so it feels nice and beefy. And then um, to actually attach that to the bare latch that's gonna be on the inside, we've got a throttle cable. Trust me, all this stuff does work in there. We're just gonna have to kind of go with the process and get it in there and uh, you know, just kind of go from there. So the first thing that we're gonna do actually is, uh, you guys will be able to see anything, uh, but we need to make a sheet that's gonna go in here to actually mount that handle. So I think we're gonna start with that. I wish I had a light uh, so you could see that because right now there's just a gaping hole that hopefully you can see the outside there. Uh, so we need to make that so that we can mount that handle so that we can start figuring out the linkage for the back handle for the bear latch and then uh, we can move on to the inside handle. So I'm gonna probably just start cutting stuff out. You guys are gonna see that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Lacey, you gonna start sleeping because the heat's on? Yeah. <laughs>
right guys, so you saw that I got that sheet made up in here. Uh, so you can see I got the handle in as well. Uh, I actually cut kind of a little bit of the handle off just to try to get it as close over to the side as possible. Uh, I know it's gonna be kind of hard to see in here, uh, but you can kind of see this is what I'm working with. That's the bear latch that we installed and I just made up just a little linkage to go in between so if I can reach my hand in here. You guys can watch that. I still gotta put rivets like one into the side to hold it, but it goes down, pops the door. So that's super cool. It latches and also it has the lock function. So if I can get in here, turn that up, you can no longer pull on the handle and it doesn't open. So that's super cool. Uh, I am gonna put one rivet like uh, somewhere over here, just through the face uh, to actually hold this sheet. Uh, this is gonna get seam sealed in here. Uh, so it should hold it pretty well once uh, the seam seal is uh, all in there. Um, you know, obviously I haven't done this before other than doing it on the other side. Uh, so I don't know the longevity of this, how it's going to last, but uh, I guess we're going to see. But uh, now what we can do is I can move on to actually making up the pieces for the in like inside latch. Uh, so I'm going to get welding these little spacers onto this plate. I'm gonna get this handle on there like that. We've got this little tab that we're gonna weld onto this to actually hold the throttle cables. So I'm gonna start welding those pieces up and then uh, we'll see about maybe getting that handle in the car, the cable cut, and then uh, we'll see if that one works just as well as the outside ones. So here we go. All right guys, so just before we actually start on the inside handle, I got a sweet little package over here that we picked up today. Dang, look at these friggin Hoosiers, man. Look at that. That's going to be super cool on a C1 Chevelle. Uh, they are DOT approved, uh, so we'll be able to run these on the street. These are my new rims that I got picked up. The rims that were on this car were originally gray, uh, so I think it's going to match to the vibe that this car used to have. Uh, I do still have those original set of wheels that I bought that I want to get modified. Uh, but this was just an easier option for now uh, to go with. Uh, they are a 10 inch rim with a four inch back set. Uh, what I have on there right now, it's a nine and a half with a five. And I actually had to run like just like a quarter inch spacer on the front to make it work. Uh, so hopefully this tire and rim is gonna work a lot better on the car. Uh, so I think me and dad are actually gonna get these things kind of thrown onto those rims and then I'll have to go get them balanced at some point. But uh, I'm really excited to see what they're gonna look like. They are super soft. They are a zero tread wear. Uh, the ad that I found online, somebody said that they were supposed to be a 500. So we're gonna see how long they last, but uh, if it looks cool for the first little bit when I actually drive the car, I mean, that's all that matters anyways. But uh, hey, that's super awesome, super motivating. Uh, but uh, we're gonna actually start getting welding on that thing. But uh, I just wanna show you guys this before we actually did anything with them. Man, they are super cool, man. <laughs> so wicked, I can't wait to get them on there. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is what we got going on for the inside handle. Uh, so I just made up some quarter inch spacers to go in behind this thing from the Tri-5 Chevy. Uh, I just needed to do that so that this could pivot just because there's like a pin that goes backwards. Uh, I still have to cut this down to actually it'll go somewhere about here so that our throttle cable can hook here. But I got to get these welded on first and then we can start messing around with the throttle cable to actually get that lined up. So. We get those tacked on and then uh, we'll come back to once uh you know it's looking like something so here we go hopefully i don't weld it right to the plate <laughs> bad that way once we take it off we don't lose them i just gotta tack the nuts on the back side here just yet and then uh yeah we'll friggin figure this out sweet so this is what it's looking like with that little tab welded on there so you can see that i drilled the hole and i also put a slot into that so what you can actually do is you can undo this and take this whole cable out without uh obviously having to pull the cable apart uh but basically 
you can see that it's going to pull, has a travel about probably, I don't know, I'd say at least three quarters, which is enough to pull the bear latch. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get this welded into the car so we can actually start making up the backside bracket that's going to go to the bear latch. And then uh, we'll see if it's going to work. So let's get welding in there. Lacey, not sleeping yet. <laughs> All right guys, so you can see I got that one welded in there so you'll be able to pull on it from the passenger seat. Uh, so now we're just working on the inside part. Uh, so you should be able to see here. So basically the part that would actually be hooked up to the throttle cable is what's hooked up to the bear latch here. I just made up this little bracket to hold the other piece that, uh, I don't know, that holds the cable for adjustment. Now that we're doing any kind of adjustment on it. So I've marked my braided line here where it needs to get cut off uh, there's a sleeve that goes on there and i probably lost it because i have no idea where it went so i'm going to pull this out cut that off and then we'll cut the actual cable to length and tighten it in there and then we'll see if the bear latch works in here hopefully it's gonna because the other side did so we'll come back and uh, we'll see if it's working all right guys so we got that throttle cable put in there it's all cut down everything's kind of tightened uh, so I got two cameras set up here so I'll try to split in between both of them so you can both see what's going on on the inside and the outside I'm gonna reach around pull that handle so you guys can see that it actually works so that's super cool obviously I don't know the longevity of this on how long it's actually gonna last uh, but for now that's awesome it's working so we're gonna get this inside panel back on make sure everything functions with both latches all hooked up and then maybe what we're going to do is we'll show that and then we might move on to actually putting those tires onto the rims so that's super cool friggin lacy getting in the car <laughs> all right guys we got the inside handle in there and we got the back sheet back on so we should be able to pop this now door opens you can shut it this locks you can no longer open it so that's super cool we can pop the door from the inside so that's awesome so now we can get moving on to actually getting those tires onto those rims so man this thing is just getting there and that's wicked <laughs> all right guys so now we're gonna put the tires onto the rims uh we don't have a tire machine so we do it kind of a little bit old school uh so dad's just lubing it up with some windex uh we just have a rubber mallet and we got some i don't know what you want to call them tire spoons or whatever manual labor uh, so basically what we're gonna do dad's gonna kind of get it started I'm gonna whack it and then uh, Basically, we're gonna go from there. So we'll put you on time-lapse while dad struggles here without me helping him And then uh, we'll see if we can get the other two on you can see see those ones are looking real sweet Friggin dad. <laughs> tires turned out pretty sweet we got them all hammered on onto the rims um, I love the look of these hopefully later on in the video we'll actually get these onto the car uh, but uh, just a little tip for when we're doing that um, some people will pop the bead on and then they'll stick the valve in right away uh, we've actually noticed if you let all the air out and the tire like relax uh, when you go to balance the tires it actually works out a whole lot better for you uh, you might not get as many weights just because when the tire actually pops over the bead it kind of like makes it egg shaped 
Uh, so you want to let that actually relax. Uh, these are brand new tires, so I don't know if that would cause something. Maybe an old tire that's stiff. It'd be like that, but uh, we've just been doing that for years. Makes it a lot better. And uh, yeah, just a little tip for you guys if you're doing this at home. Uh, but uh, I think we're actually going to move on to hopefully Jordan is going to come and actually help me out here tomorrow. So we might actually start making up some patches for the inside of the car and tightening up some loose ends on the sheet metal in there. And then we'll get these bad boys on the car and see what they look like. But they're looking sick. <laughs> All right guys, so we just got those tires all finished up, but you're gonna have to wait to see those onto the car. But my buddy Jordan actually showed up here. Uh, so he's actually 10 times cooler than me. He works on a top fuel funny, or uh, well, dragster, Dra yeah. Yeah, dragster, he's worked on funny cars and stuff like that. So he, you know, he lives a crazy life, but he is here to help on the C1 Chevelle today. And uh, yeah, you know, it's gonna be a little different than what you usually work on. Yeah. We're gonna be doing some like sheet metal work on the inside. So we'll show you guys that. Uh, but Jordan actually brought a really cool thing with him. Uh, so this thing is called a pod box and your dad works with a guy right. that uh, came by at Motorama and he was like, he sat in the car and he was like, hey, I got this really cool vintage little piece. I'm not sure if it's from like the 90s or something like that. Apparently they used to give these things away at the racetrack and he was like, hey, you can have this thing donated for the build. So, you know, huge shout out to Ben for actually giving this pod box thing. It has like all this instructions. So when we get into a wiring video, hopefully we can get that thing mounted in the car and it's gonna look super cool. Uh, but Jordan's actually gonna give me a hand on the inside here. Uh, so when we did the floor video, basically there's like a lot of loose ends that need to be tied together. Uh, so we actually need to like drill and fasten down the tunnel. Uh, so we're gonna get Jordan in there, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna get his hand to actually make up some patch panels because there's still stuff in there that isn't finished. Uh, so I don't know where you wanna be, if you wanna be inside of the car, outside. I don't know, what do you wanna make pan like patch panels sure, first? Sure, man, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with that. We'll probably come back to once we got maybe a better game plan here and uh, maybe something's happening. So here we go. Friggin' Lacey over here destroying the blanket. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That is precision. Right? Dang, dude. So I have no idea what it's gonna hit on the other side once you go through the floor pan. We're about to find out. But yeah, we're gonna find out. So we're gonna come back to once we have all these holes drilled. Jordan is doing a wonderful job in here. We actually just made up all the templates for around the tubes and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh. Made her through. Oh yeah. I like how slow you went. I usually just go really fast and then, uh, yeah. Trying to save the drill bits, you know? Yeah, yeah. Looks pretty good. Oh yeah. Hmm. I guess we'll figure it out. We'll probably, if we get most of this drilled out, we'll actually maybe try to put some rib nuts or something in there. I don't know. We're going to figure it out, but we'll be back. <laughs> Sweet. I like it. Freaking Jordan filming now. He can show us what, what he did in here. Just drilled actually a whole bunch of holes on the center tunnel in there. Uh, we still have to take that out to drill the other holes, but you know, that's a really great step in the right direction. Uh, so I don't have to do it. So thank you, Jordan. That was awesome that you did that. Uh, we got some templates made up that hopefully we're gonna get Jordan to weld in in here to finish off that sheet metal work. And we open the mysterious letter for the pod box. Luckily, I already took the money out that, that was in here, so, you know. But we got, like, one that was typed up, but there's this, like, cool handwritten letter for what all the wires do. And you can see that it says 2003. So that's pretty cool. Was that 11? No, that's 21, yeah. 21 years ago. So that is pretty cool. They've got this little vintage piece here. Uh, we might have to change the wiring on this thing, but that's cool. So now I think what we're going to do is we're going to get Jordan 
What? You're going to weld in there? I think we're going to try to weld. You're going to try to weld? Okay, so we're going to get Jordan in there welding, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see how that turns out. I'm pretty excited. Cool. <laughs> guys so we got that welded in there just tacked for now i might throw a couple more welds onto that but it's looking really awesome so you know thank you jordan once again here because that would have took me friggin forever to try to do by myself uh so we're gonna do the other one on the other side off camera just because we're going to be fighting with gas pedal and all that stuff over there and the steering wheels so we'll come back to once this is more figured out super cool dude yeah <laughs> I think Jordan, she's looking mint. That's Dang. holy. Look at those friggin' patches in there, dude. Once she's all seam sealed, it's gonna look sweet. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah, thank you. All right guys, so Jordan got those patches welded in here. Uh, basically, we're just gonna be seam sealing over that anyway, so it doesn't need to be anything fancy, but Jordan did a friggin' awesome job, dude. Thank Good you for time. that. Thank you. Once again, he is out here doing the, you know, Crappy jobs, I would say. I don't know you want to call it. They're just miserable climbing in It wasn't in crappy. It was just kind of... Yeah, you're, it's like a tight area, so it's yeah. like you're, you know, you're pretzeled in there. I think that's... Yeah, what I like you, that. <laughs> like what you call it. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, Jordan, for coming out doing that. I know Absolutely. you got to hit the road. Uh, so, you know, we're going to continue on. I might uh, see if I can get this tunnel fast more down, but Jordan got all the holes drilled, so I don't need to do that. So that is super cool. And uh, then maybe we might throw the tires on. So thanks, Jordan. Yeah, thank you. We'll, see you, awesome. we'll yeah. see you next time, dude. Fun. Thank yeah, you. yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, Lacey, she's doing it. Typewrote walker. <laughs> All right, guys. So it's been a couple days since Jordan has actually been here. And again, I just want to give him a big shout out for actually getting in here and doing all like the hard jobs underneath the dash in the cockpit of the Chevelle. Uh, it's really motivated me to actually finish up this in here. Uh, so show, show you guys what I've done. Uh, so it's looking pretty tidy all up in here. I actually went ahead after Jordan did all those holes. I put all my Allen head hardware in there. So the center tunnel is basically fastened down for good. Other than some gaskets that has to go on there to actually seal it all. Uh, I actually made up this little, I don't know what you want to call it, shifter boot holder tunnel thing. I'll try to get around from the other side so you guys can see that a little bit better. And I made up this little access panel here behind the passenger seat. And the sole purpose for that is so that uh, if we do have to take the transmission out of this thing, we don't have to actually get underneath the car. So you can take the passenger seat out, get back there to undo the rear drive shaft. So you can slide that out. And then obviously the whole front tunnel can come apart so you can take everything out from the inside. So that's looking super cool. It's on Zeus fasteners. That all works. I got to do a gasket on that. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there's many more things that need to be done here. Another kick panel on the other side I got to do. I got the one on the passenger side here done because that's the easy one. Uh, but basically everything on the inside is coming together here in the cockpit. Um, I have a little bit more sheet metal work to do on the doors just to fasten them in for good and a few holes here and there to patch in. Uh, but um, we're really getting there with this stuff. So, you know, it's looking super cool. I did pick up some vent windows the other day that are apparently super rare and hard to find. So I'll show you guys that here in a second, uh, but you probably won't see us do anything with those until the next video. Uh, but uh, they are right here. I had super hard time actually trying to find these. Uh, so these came out of a 68 Beaumont. So exactly the same thing, just a Pontiac. Uh, but uh, they all work, so we're going to 
cut these things up and modify them to fit in there. So I feel really bad for doing that because, you know, they are super rare apparently to find. Uh, but, uh, you know, all in the name of custom. So that's going to be a thing coming up in the next video. And just to end off this video here, we have a nice, cool little surprise here on the other side. Dang, look at these friggin' Hoosiers on the C1 Chevelle. Man, it gives this car such a different look when you get this like three quarter angle and you can see the tread in there. I'm loving it. The gray rims, they look super cool. Uh, so, and they run nice and true. The other rims, those ones that were on there were like super crooked. Uh, so hopefully we're not gonna have any issues there with wobble. I still have to get these tires balanced. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's super motivating to actually see them on here. And uh, hopefully we're gonna be driving this thing soon. Fingers crossed. Still a bunch of work to do. Uh, I'm probably going to take these off just so that they don't get flat spots in them. But uh, yeah, the C1 Chevelle is really coming together here. Like I said, just a few more little things to button up on the cockpit on the inside. And then basically that's all finished. And then uh, we can start moving on to other things. I don't know what's coming up next year. I think the next video is going to be something similar to this where we just kind of knock off a whole bunch of things off the list. Uh, but uh, you guys will just have to wait around till next time to see what we come up with. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. And as always, don't forget to salute the beaver. We'll catch you next time.